Hello and welcome to my channel and my first video tutorial. I am VR Sensei. As you saw with the video title, this video is the first YouTube tutorial for using your Pico 4 tethered using a little known and rock stable method that works perfectly with virtual desktop. This method is called reverse tethering and it only needs one USB-C cable. And yes, when I say rock stable, that means no more blue screens from tethering which is something that plagues the established ways of single cable tethering. If you follow my guide, you will get perfect stability, perfect streaming quality, more battery life, and you won't have to turn on Wi-Fi on the Pico ever again. Now let's get started. First, we are going to need to download three packages off the internet to set this up. There will also be a section on getting and setting up virtual desktop, but if you already have virtual desktop, you can skip that part later in the video. Direct download links are in the video description. We will start by downloading a program called Nairi Tet from GitHub. This program will allow you to set up stable reverse tether through ADB connection to the Pico 4 over USB cable. If you want to download the package by navigating yourself to the GitHub page for Nairi Tet, just make sure to select the Java version for download, since as of today, the Rust version is still a bit unstable on Windows. Next, we will download the necessary Android ADB files, which are found in the Android Platform Tools package, which can be found here. Be sure to download the package for Windows. Next, we are going to download the latest Java runtime to be able to use this method. And here we select the 64-bit installer for Windows. Next, we go to our browser's downloads folder where you downloaded the packages. We start by extracting the Nairi tet javazip file and the platformtools.zip file. After extracting, feel free to delete the two zip files since we will not need them anymore. Next, we go into the platform tools folder to get the three files we need from that folder. The three files we need to copy are adb.exe, adbwinapi.dll, and finally adbwinusbapi.dll. Copy these three files. Next, navigate to the Nairi Tet folder, open it, and then open the Nairi Tet folder within that folder until you see these files. Here we are going to paste the three files we copied earlier from the Platform Tools folder. Next, we are going to run the setup file for the Java environment runtime and install it, since Java is needed to run the Nairi Tet reverse tether. I have already installed Java on my PC, so I will skip the setup part for Java. Just use the default options given in the installer and finish the setup of the Java runtime. Now, after installing Java, the next thing I would recommend you to do is to move the Nairi Tet folder to the place on your hard drive that you want to keep the program located from now on. Since the whole program is all contained within this one folder, in my case, I will just put it into the root of my hard drive labeled G. After safely copying the folder to its final location, we can go ahead and delete all the other files and folders we downloaded in the beginning and used earlier, since we will not need them anymore. We will now only need the Nairi Tet folder and the files now within it. Now we are going to copy to the Pico 4, the Nairi Tet, Dot .apk file that we then need to set up on the Pico 4. Make sure the headset is turned on and plug the headset into the PC with a USB cable. Navigate to the Nairi Tet folder on your PC and copy the Nairi Tet .apk file. Next, navigate to the Pico 4 on your PC under My PC in File Explorer and open its internal storage. Open the download folder and paste into that folder the nairitet.apk file. Next, you are going to hop into your Pico 4. Now on your Pico 4, we are going to have to turn on USB debugging. Start by clicking on the quick settings tile, go into settings, and then click on the general section in the menu. Here we are going to scroll down all the way to the About tile and click on that. Next we scroll down to the Software version tile. 
Keep your pointer on that tile, and then click on it with the trigger button eight times in a row. If done successfully, you will now see a new item appear on the menu to the left called Developer Options. Now select the Developer section and turn on USB Debug like so, and hit Confirm on the Allow USB Debugging notification that pops up. Next we are going to open the Pico 4 File Manager and navigate to the Downloads folder located under All Files. Open the Downloads folder and then click on nyretet.apk to install it on the Pico 4. When that is done, we go back to the PC again. Now we are going to check and see if we successfully enabled USB debug on the Pico 4. Make sure the headset is on and still connected to the PC by USB. Navigate to the Nyri Tet folder on your PC and open it. We are going to have to run an ADB command in the command prompt console. We do that simply by being inside the Nyri Tet folder. Then we click on the navigation bar at the top with the mouse. And we just type in the letters CMD and hit enter like so. Now in the console window that opens up, we are going to type ADB, followed by space and the word devices, and then hit enter. If the console outputs a device attached like so, then congratulations, Everything has been set up perfectly, and you won't have to do any of this again. If it does not show an attached device, go over the former steps again. And also make sure no other Android device, except the Pico 4 is connected to the PC when you run the ADB devices command. This command is also a good way to verify if ADB truly sees the Pico 4 through USB if you ever need to troubleshoot. Next we are going to go over setting up virtual desktop on your PC and the Pico 4. If you already have virtual desktop set up on your PC and the Pico 4, you can skip to the next part in this tutorial. Now on your PC, start by navigating to the virtual desktop site. The link is in the description. Download the virtual desktop streamer app for Windows. Next, run the virtual desktop setup from the file you downloaded. Finish the setup on your PC, and then run the streamer app. Now inside the streamer app, under accounts, you are going to have to start by putting in the Pico username that is set up on your Pico 4. To see what that username is, hop into your Pico 4, and then click on the user center tile. Here you can see your Pico 4 username that you will input into the streamer app on the PC. Now inside the streamer app on the PC, Hit the change button and type your username in under Pico usernames. Then hit the save button. Verify the username is correct. And next navigate to the options menu on the streamer app. Here we are going to select HEVC 10 bit as the preferred codec and VDXR as the OpenXR runtime. The other settings are just preferences with how the streamer app behaves on your PC. Next, we are going to install Virtual Desktop on the Pico 4. Now on the Pico 4, we are going to have to purchase and set up Virtual Desktop's app for the Pico 4. Navigate to the store on the Pico 4 and search for Virtual Desktop. You can also just click on the Top Apps section in the Pico Store, where Virtual Desktop can always be found in first place. Since I have already purchased it, I just get a download button. Just download and install it after purchasing, like so. Don't think more about Virtual Desktop for now on the Pico 4, and just set the Pico 4 to stay on the home screen of the headset. Now that we have set up Virtual Desktop, we are now finally ready to run the reverse tether for the first time. Make sure the Pico 4 is turned on, with no apps running, and make sure it is connected to the PC with a USB cable. Now, on your PC open the Nyri Tet folder, and then to start the reverse tether, run the specific file named Nyri Tet runcmd A console window will open up, 
and the program will make the first connection to the Pico 4 like so. Since we are running the reverse tether for the first time, a pop-up notification will now show up on the Pico 4's home screen that you will need to accept to create a VPN tether connection to the PC. Now quickly hop into your Pico 4 again and hit OK on the connection request window pop-up. You will only need to do this once this first time. Go back to your PC and check the Nairi Tet console window. If it is showing UDP and TCP connections like so, congratulations, you have now set up reverse tether successfully. We can now turn the Wi-Fi off on the Pico 4 since the headset is now getting its internet connection from the PC through reverse tethering. From now on, you can always connect reverse tethering in three easy steps. First, make sure the virtual desktop streamer app or any other apps you use for streaming, for instance like ALVR, is up and running on your PC. Secondly, make sure that the Pico 4 is turned on and connected to the PC with a USB cable. And lastly, run the nairitet-run.cmd file that is located in the nairitet folder to start the reverse tether. When running, the reverse tethering connection will now always provide the Pico 4 with internet through VPN tunneling. That means you won't ever need to turn on the Wi-Fi on the Pico 4 for PC VR. Now that we have set up everything successfully, we can now run virtual desktop on the Pico 4 and see how the streaming performance looks. I am VR Sensei. And thank you for watching my tutorial. Please subscribe so you won't miss upcoming content and hit that like button if my tutorial helped you to get the perfect tethered PC VR experience. If you want to support upcoming videos, you can also buy me a coffee with the link in the video description. Thank you and goodbye.